Like, I make the same shit, it gets placed, it gets fucking placed, it gets on the biggest albums. It gets on Young Ducks album, it gets on the Migos album. But what I'm doing, it's like two chords. And this is what you guys want. This is how we develop this shit. Two chords and everybody uses that shit. I was live streaming every week my new loops. It went on YouTube. Everybody went crazy. They said Palace is the best loop maker. Did you ever heard? Did you ever heard any of those loops that I played on the live stream in any song that I placed? No, because it was good fucking loops with hella progressions and breakdowns and like a lot of instruments. But it can't get placed because it's too full or like it's too many chords or the rapper is like, no, we, we can't put the shit on. You know what I mean? But then I do two chords and a guitar pedal, like an analog guitar pedal on fucking bells and everybody get and this shit gets placed and like gets placed on the biggest albums. Bro, that shit is sad. That shit is hella sad. That is Palace, a famous music producer and melody writer. And if you're in the producer scene, you most definitely know this guy. And he's asking, or he's posing, I think, a very important question about what trap music is and where it's headed. So is trap music in a decadent place and is it going downhill? Well, Palace tells us that he's behind the scenes. You know, he's in the industry. He gets placements. He gets placements with Migos, Future, Young Thug, etc. And he's making these beats, or melodies more so, that other producers take and the artists say, I like that one, let me make a song with it. And so he's saying that particularly only the simple melodies he makes are getting chosen and that it's sad and almost embarrassing. It's like no one wants to hear the complex pieces. And Paulus says something very important. He talks, or he draws a connection between the artist and then the audience, or what people want to hear, right? And so, as I understand, he's not blaming the artist, or maybe part of, part of the blame is on the artist, but he's acknowledging the whole situation. That is, you have an audience that listens to the music and creates the revenue, then you have the artists that deliver to the audience's needs, and then you have the producers that use the tools that they're given they make the beats and melodies, and then the artists say, I like that one, that's what I think will hit. And you know there's the A&R involved in this and so much more, but that's the basic process. There's melodies, the artist chooses the simple ones because he thinks, he or she thinks, that the audience will like it more. And I really think that the, the perfect line from that clip that I just played is that it's sad, it's embarrassing. Bro, that shit is sad. And so I want to move on to a real example. Think to yourself, what is the last huge trap song that it hit the charts, right? It's no other than Rap Star by Polo G. And so, he didn't produce this song, obviously. All he did was write the lyrics. So let's take a look at these lyrics. Let's see what he's adding artistically to the song. And remember, this beat if you listen to it, it has three chords, but it's very close to being a simple two chord beat and it's very, the loop is very short. The beat is an average trap beat, okay? Nothing special. It is catchy, the song is catchy, I'll give it that, but it's nothing special. It's not pushing the genre forward at all. If we think about Fuck Up Some Commas by Future and how far we've come to Polo G, minimal. But let's, let's read the artistic expression he's providing on the song. So he says, I won't love a hoe, after we fuck she can't get near me, only bitch, a co only bitch I give a conversation to is Siri. My pants are mirroring, yes I'm winning clearly, I'm the chosen one seeing the potential so they fear me. Lately I've been praying, God, I wonder can you hear me? It's clear, he's just putting rhymes together to make something sound catchy and rappable, and something that you're saying, you know, you think you're cool saying, it, right? But if we take his religious faith seriously, the Christian faith, right? He's basically talking about at the beginning of the line, and then at the end of it saying, 
I wonder if God can hear me. And at this point, you have to ask yourself, Polo G, maybe it's not that he can't hear you, but you're not listening. The lyrics show and prove the hypothesis that the artists here are not trying to add anything spiritually meaningful or deeper than just surface level. It's about slapping the song together with a simple beat to make a song that will get, what, 370 million plays, top streams on Billboard. It's sad and it's embarrassing. Bro, that shit is sad. That shit is hella sad. And in the culture, we're kind of used to this postmodern approach where you say, it's artistic. You can't criticize the music. It's all expression and therefore all equal. But what this, of course, doesn't count in for, what it doesn't account for, is that maybe what is guiding this art is not for art in itself or artistic values, but for something in the Bible, in the chapter of Timothy, it goes a little bit like this. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Because if you listen to the rest of that song, you can hear what the themes are. What more do I need to say? But the message I want to get across on this channel, which is a music production channel that teaches you how to make songs the way you want to make them, is that you have to know your path, right? Palace, just like I mentioned, Simon Servita in the other video, he's coming face to face with the truth right now. He says, I can have my artistic path and, and be creative, right? But I'm not going to get placed. I'm not going to get placed that easily. Or I can be the best at making these simple melodies and get placed relatively easily. The choice is yours. But at every step of the way, we need to do better as an audience, as producers, and as artists. Walk the line. Frank Dukes, Frank Dukes has done it. Other producers have done it. It's hard, and you have to work hard. But choose your path. And know that there is a deep dissettlement right now in, in a lot of music, but especially trap music. What rules over the genre is not an artistic love or a creative love. It's something much more haunting. I don't hope to place that right now, but in the, in the lines of these songs, I remember for me it was it was the song "Rockstar" by Post Malone and Twenty One Savage. I don't think that these artists are trying to make music that is creatively and artistically expression. Choose your path. Thank you for watching.